I made this Steam game in just four months. Here's how I did it. As I've mentioned in the past, use keybinds, so I use Control shift o to quickly bring up the quick open scene, so I can switch over to this scene quickly and then switch back my board. Going along with that, I use a lot of the same keybinds in VS Code. So in both Godot and VS Code, I use Control t to go to whatever file I want, so that's for scripts. In Godot, I can quickly go to my board script. I personally prefer using VS Code because it works faster when the script gets really large, but that choice is up to you. Inside of VS Code, I can quickly find in files by doing Control o This will start by searching in this file, so I can, for example, search for suit, and it will take me here when I press enter. When I make levels, like I've mentioned in the past, I use the reveal in the side. My setting is Control q Let's say I wanted to duplicate this level here, so I can just Control c Control v rename it. Say this is 17. I can delete all of this, and using the snippets feature in VS Code, it's basically a macro. So if I say I want my level template, then it auto types all of this, so it's like having a lot of stuff on your copy paste all the time. You can easily set these up by doing Control shift p and then Snippet, configure snippets, and then you can make whatever you want. When using VS Code, I normally split up the window, so I keep the levels on the side here because these don't take up much space, and then I can go below that. I have a to-do section of some kind, so I have my to-do here, I can for example say fix bug of some kind, then I have a macro, which is control M for me, that automatically puts in this hashtag done, this really speeds up my workflow, this fix a bug, mark it done. Another tip is to use GitHub desktop, this lets you easily track your changes, I can see what changes I've made, and then I can easily commit, this is the same as git, but it's in a GUI, so it's easier for some people. Or if you want to easily see the file changes, you can just click on them and it shows them here. Back inside Godot, I have a hotkey, which is Control-B to automatically run the game, but I used auto hotkey to make it so that it works even from VS Code, so when I press Control-B here, it automatically switches over. Now I'm in Godot, and it will run the game automatically. If you notice that your game is a little slow to start, you can close out of all of your script tabs and some of the extra scenes that you have open. Now when I use the Control-B shortcut, that was much faster. You'll notice I instantly started into the game. That's another hack that I have. In my project settings, it's normally supposed to go to the logo screen, that's like the loading logo for the game. If I set it up, if it detects that I'm in the editor, then I'll automatically go to the game scene. The code for that is right here. I just have is running in editor as a global. You can use os.has feature editor. And if I want to test how it's going to be for the users, I have this return false commented out that I can just toggle the comment for, and it will treat me like I'm a user. Another trick is using two monitors. This makes it a lot easier. Just for this example, I'm going to shrink this all into one monitor. Let's say I have my game running here, and as debug info, I have here that this is level 22.9. We are back in VS Code, I'll go to 22.9. Let's pretend like the game is on a second monitor, so let's say I want to change this value here to be a 9. Since this is just a text file in the game, I have a hotkey to reload the scene. You can see now this 7 is a 9. I don't have to restart the editor, it's amazing. If you only have one monitor, what you can do, open your project setting in Godot, and you can go to Window, Always on Top, and check that. That'll make the game window always stay on top, and then you can shrink it down if you wanted. So I just mentioned you don't have to restart the editor, but it's actually not a huge deal. You can actually make changes inside the editor, and they will reflect in the game. For example, if I wanted to hide all of the cards in my hand in the local version, so let's say I want this change to persist just for the current running game, I can go to the Remote tab, Main, Cards and Hand Holder, I can hide that. Now you can see all the cards in my hand disappeared, and I can toggle that back. But well, let's say I want to make this change permanent, like even after I restart the game, then I still can't see my hand. I would do that in the Local tab, and this does update in the Live version, so if I uncheck the visibility for Cards and hand. You can see it hides. Not only that, you can make code changes as well. Here's an example of hot reloading. So if I change the code and then save it, and then while the game is running, it just automatically restarts and spaces the cards how I said, then I can undo that change. And now when I save it, then the game freezes for a second, but then it just goes back to how it was. It's very convenient. Well, let's say I'm typing out some long change and I have autosave turned on, so I don't want that necessarily. I have a keybind set up to toggle autosave, which is Control shift y for me. 
So now I can type stuff without any issues. You can see the file says it's not saved yet, but then I can just change it back to whatever I wanted. And now I can press save and now the game will set that up. So I spaced them a little too far here. So it only shows one card. But if I went to 130, let's say, you can see they're spaced more again. And I'll just undo to what I had. And I can toggle back on autosave. And it automatically saved when I did that. And you can see all my cards are back together again. If I want to see every place that this function is used, I do alt shift F12, which is what I have it set to, which is find all references. And it tells me where this function is being used. And I can just hop between all of them. And then let's say I want to see what the definition of that function was. I have it set up to just be F12. And that's a jump to definition for me. This might not be the best coding standard, but I have most of my code in this file here. And so I have a hotkey to go to this file that's in the first position, which as you saw there, it's open first editor in group, which I have set to control back tick. Yeah, just ignore the fact this is like 2,500 lines. <laughs> that's another one. I have the go back shortcut and go forward, which is shift alt minus. So I'm at the top of the file and then I press control end to go to the end of the file. It's like, wait, what was that thing I was just looking at? I do alt minus to go back. And then, all right, I'm done looking at this. Let's go to where I just was before this. That's alt shift minus to go forward. You probably have to set a lot of these keybinds. I made them custom for myself. Here's another one that I use quite often is control E to toggle the sidebar view. Then I have more space on my screen. Another hotkey that I use is control G to jump to a line. So let's say I want to go to line 1200. I can do that. And I have the same thing set up in Godot. It makes it way easier if you keep the hotkeys consistent. So it's also control G here. Let's look at how to use the debugger. So I'm going to set a breakpoint on this line. What that does, when the program gets to this line that it's running, it's going to pause the whole program and let me inspect things. So let's try this out. So I'm going to make it get to that line by placing a three here. You can see it just paused everything like the game is frozen. And now I can inspect by just hovering over these variables. Or if I wanted to look at all of my variable values, I can search them down here. So you can see this new locations has a zero zero inside of it. So nothing really interesting is going on here. Uh, I can see this is an empty array and position is zero zero. Let's say I wanted to pause on this line down here so I can set another breakpoint. So it's still paused on this one up here. What I can do is I can just say continue, which means I don't really care about what's happening. So just go on until you hit the next breakpoint. This is just a print line, but it goes into this function. So if I want to investigate what's going on in that function, we can use the controls down here. So you can see this one is step over. That means I don't care about this. But if I actually do want to see what the function is doing, I can use it step into. So we go into that. Now it took me to that definition of the function that was being called. And let's say I wanted to look at a function here, get tile rotation. If I use step into again, now it's looking at the get tile rotation. Now let's say I figured out the bug that was causing me issues. Since we're already inside this function, if I do step over, that just takes me to the next line of this function. Well, let's say, all right, just take me back to that original breakpoint that I made. I can use continue, which is this button here. And it just says, all right, we went back and there was no more breakpoints. So and now the game is continued. So let's say I'm done investigating here. If I go back to where I made that original breakpoint and I want to clear all my breakpoints, I can do that by right clicking the file here and say delete all breakpoints in board.gd. So now in the game again, if I place down a card, you can see it doesn't pause the game this time. It just works. Yeah, I used to be one of the people that used just print statements to try to debug things, but it definitely is a lot easier if you use the debugger in some situations. So I hope you found the video helpful. If you want to help me out, then you can wishlist my game here, see if you can defeat this Joker boss. Other than that, thanks for watching.